everyone, welcome to the Hibs Observer Monday afternoon debrief with myself, Liam Bryce, joined by Craig Nisbet to look back on what was a thoroughly, thoroughly disappointing start to the Premiership season for David Gray and his Hibs team going down 3-0 away at St Mirren. Um, I mean, I suppose, Craig, there's not... Maybe not much point asking me a silly question, asking you, sorry, a silly question like how is it going? Because I suppose after yesterday, perhaps not too great. Yeah, yeah, certainly took the wind out the sails a little bit. Um, always thought it was going to be a tough game. Um, you know, wasn't overly confident going into it, but I think just the, the manner of the defeat in the end is, yeah, it's kind of left a lot of the supporters uh, really gutted this morning. Yeah, I and quite rightly so. I mean, a lot of Hibs fans away down to Paisley um, for the game, and then by the time that third goal went in, it was you know kind of most of them had started heading for the exits, if not if they hadn't already left by that point. Uh, but I just as I kind of said, there's no really kind of other way to to sum it up, I suppose, other than just kind of really really disappointing start to the season. There was, I mean, I wouldn't. There was kind of tentative optimism I would I would have thought maybe after the Premier Sports Cup games um, and obviously we on here and you know kind of, I think everybody can acknowledge well it's going to be a, a real step up in level a real step up in test coming up against a good side like St Mirren who were I mean I think sometimes when the teams play these European games before a couple of days before you can either they, they'll feel the effects of that uh, physically maybe a wee bit mentally drained but I mean for St Mirren's case, it seemed as though it just sent them into the first league game of the season on a high, um, taking the lead shortly after half time, and then two goals in two minutes towards the end of the, the match just put it out of Hibs' reach. So, and Craig, you were there, and then you <laughs> dutifully rewatched the game for us. Uh, Craig does that, so the rest of us don't have to. Um, I mean, what are your what are your sort of main takeaways from it? What how how do you try and sum up that result and performance? Yeah, I mean, on the way there, I mean, having watched St Mirren in their two games against Valour, I, like, and it's obviously hard to kind of judge that opposition as well. Um, but like, they were, I thought they were really impressive, and I thought they were really impressive on on Thursday night as well. Um, and obviously, in that game, they were sixty five, seventy minutes. The tie was over. They were able to make a few substitutions. You know, give players some some rest ahead of Sunday. Um, but you were still hoping maybe that that. Like putting that effort into the game, Hibs having a little bit more recovery time, uh, it would have given us the edge. And I think, and obviously Mark O'Hara not not starting for them as well. Um, another thing that fell in our favour. And actually, having rewatched it, the first half was actually quite even. And you know, if I can be bold, I would say Hibs maybe just edged it with the, the chances, the kind of calibre of chances they created. I mean, we never really worked the goalkeeper as much as we would have wanted to, but we. Great chance for 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 Dylan Venti. Um, that he, he has to, you know, he just has to score that. Um, yeah. And and the game was a bit. It was even, you know, it was going back and forth. They, they certainly weren't really working our keeper much, but we were getting into good areas, good spaces. Um, you know, another deli- I think a delivery from Obita and, and Gogic nearly turned it into his own net, and it was a great save from the keeper. And, and actually, having rewatched the first half, you were we went in at half time, sort of dominating possession. Uh, I think we had. Uh, sort of more passes into the final third, all those things that were pointing in the right the right direction of of maybe going and getting a result, but it just seemed to turn in the second half. And you know they made a they they took Tanzer off um, for Brown, which you know probably was you know he, he was on a yellow card. Maybe they were they were a bit concerned maybe about uh, him getting a second yellow and going down that. But I think losing that early goal. Um, straight into the second half like it was a reminder for me really that this team are still a work in progress and they're still quite fragile you know and mm-hmm. and after conceding that goal um you know we got ourselves together a little bit but obviously then the next two goals go in in quick succession and and the game's gone um so i think the first half relatively positive um and i suppose we'll get into it but in in the second half i think things fell away for a number of reasons i think uh, maybe tactically, one thing that you do need to maybe sort of question a little bit, but again, just that further highlight of our lack of depth and strength off the bench, um, and even in comparison to, to St Mirren, uh, I think there was quite a big gulf in that, and I think that contributed to it as well. 
Yeah, uh huh, exactly. I mean, I said again, full disclosure, folks, I didn't see the game yesterday. Um, I spent around about nine, ten hours on the motorway. Um, but you know, I don't know if I would have, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, by the sounds of it, Craig would have still swapped places with me, um, if he'd had the choice. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of rewatched bits of it back. I've seen the highlights, I watched a bit of sports scene when I came in last night. I've looked at the stats bomb data this morning um, just tried to pick out wee bits to, to go back and watch just not really had the time to watch it in full but I mean it, certainly it seemed to me like a bit of a familiar story um, Hibs having chances not I mean the, the one with Vente is the one that obviously sticks out we can maybe speak about him uh, and that in the kind of broader context a wee bit later on but it looked like to me it seemed like a familiar story uh, Hibs missing chances that then being punished and then towards the end, obviously two goals in two minutes, it's kind of seen stuff like that last season and the game just completely gets away from him. So, I mean, am I, would I be wrong in saying that? Did it have a kind of familiar feel? And I suppose it's not, if, if so, it's not entirely surprising that some of those frailties, if not all of them, are, are still there. It's not going to go away overnight. It's going to be a kind of a difficult fix, but it, it certainly seemed to me like it's one that, even without watching the game, I think I think well, I've probably seen all that before anyway. Yeah, and it was interesting going through your article and and looking at the the stats bomb uh, data as well, and just about how I suppose that you know St. Mirren at the end they only had four shots on target. I think a lower expected goals from those chances compared to yep. the hip. Uh, so in that case, it is you know how many times last season did we say we actually created some good opportunities? Our XG was high, but we we haven't put them away. Um, and it was I actually didn't realise it was quite as high as it was. Um, having and then having read your article, that really surprised me. But yeah, the, like I say, the first half, I think, um, you know, Malotnikov uh, had like a, a block shot. I think just off a wee combination involving uh, Venti Campbell and Boyle. Obviously, there was Venti's big chance, big opportunity, which at the game was very hard. I was quite low down, it was diff- I could see Venti going in the net, um, uh, but not the ball, uh, unfortunately, so it was quite hard to see that, but having seen it again, you know, it does bounce up just before him, but a, a striker of of his calibre and, and what he should be, you know, he has to he has to score that, you know, there's no there's no doubt about that, and I think you're right in your article saying that the XG was 0.58, I mean, yeah. it, it should be a wee bit higher than a that. a bit generous. I, Very I generous. Um, and then, I mean, the only other things from... And it's quite hard, obviously, when you watch a game back and you know how the result's going to go. Like, I thought when we put big change in how we play out from the back, obviously under Montgomery, we were, you know, the, the centre half started on the, the six yard box and, and we, we played out. We, we, there was a wee bit of that, but obviously they're trying to leave Bursic on the ball and bring it up and, and sort of play in that way. I, I wasn't so like comfortable with his kicking at times and, and a bit of the decision making. We moved the ball quite slow, I thought. Um, at the back, and when you play St Mirren, who are obviously in that sort of like three-five-two setup, and their their midfield are are quite flat across the pitch, but it just means that they can press quite quickly and aggressively together. And obviously, they've got a front two. You need to move the ball quick, and and it's no surprise that when we did do that, and you know, I actually thought Miller, um, especially in the first half, actually had a, a really a really solid half. He was, you know, if he could just cut out a bit of the flopping about and, and going down too too easy, in my opinion, mm. I, I think he could be such an asset because his physicality, his strength, his pace, um, and he and he is improving with his uh, sort of decision making down that St Mirren's left or right. We were we were getting a little bit of success there. Um, it just seemed that, and then we actually switched. I think we switched Malotnikov and Boyle over for a bit, which was good because Malotnikov could sort of drift inside. That would leave Miller the chance to bomb down the right, because I do sometimes think when him and Boyle play together, it's not quite as fluid when they overlap. Mm-hmm. They both want to be on the touchline, um, yep. so it sometimes can end up that we don't have anyone underlapping. Um, so I, I quite like that little switch with uh, Milotnikov, and then you get the benefit of maybe Boyle being able to cut inside and get some shots away, but we did that, I think it was about 35, 36 minutes, and, mm-hmm. and then that doesn't leave you a lot you know, yeah. to, to play with going into half time. Um and, and we had some good moments on the counter attack and and things like that and and overall going into half time it was sort of like you're obviously not having scored you're worried because you, you know we seem to be a team that if we don't get that first goal I think I said in a, a couple of posts last night that we just kind of run out of steam and when we run out of options and and chances and um there was certainly that that worry um but it was like such a poor goal that we lost 
just after yeah. just after a uh, half time and I, and I think that just knocked that knocked the wind right out of us yeah well that was what I was going to come on to next uh, just the goals from a defensive point of view I mean obviously the second one speaks for itself it's an individual error uh how did how did you see how did you see the goals yeah, I mean the first one, you know, it, it kind of comes. It's a bit sloppy. Like there's a bit, but from both teams in the middle of the park, nobody really getting on it. Um, the ball goes wide to Brown, um, and obviously goes into the wall on the on the side. But it's it's funny the way we're set up there because the ball goes like obviously with a with St. Mirren playing with wing backs. Miller pushes out to the wing back, which obviously then leaves this big gulf of space between him mm-hmm. um, and Ekpetita and. Obviously, you're hoping that Boyle or Mariah Welsh will then track the runner, and you sort of see Boyle passing on the run, which I think is probably the right thing for because Mariah Welsh is a bit closer. He's going in that direction, but where I think then it becomes awkward is Boyle then doesn't really sprint back in to then cover Mariah Welsh's space. Obviously, Miller's out of position by that point, um, and, and listen, it's a great turn, <laughs> you know, a great change of pace, a great, and it's an unbelievable finish as well. I think you can see Boyle just coming in at the last second um, to, to try and get a block in, but he's too late. And I just think if he sprints back and fills that spot when uh, Idowu cuts inside, Boyle's there, so it maybe just stops him taking the shot or he might then come outside and look again. So it is it is quite sloppy, I suppose. You could go back and say, well, Miller, you shouldn't go pushing out into that wide area, leave that for Boyle. So there was just like, it seemed like a little bit of miscommunication um, among that three and, and just uh, decision making really about who goes yeah. where and, and I suppose without knowing the intricacies of David Gray's coaching what he expects in that situation because you can have your you can have your full back going out to press a wing back but then you know your, your wide player and your uh, inside midfielder then have to cover that space and they didn't and yeah listen the crack and finish <laughs> there's no doubt about that um, and then obviously the the second goal, like you say, it's it, you know I actually when I watched it back, there was um, there had been a couple of moments in the game where like the communication between Bursic and maybe Ekpetita and, and O'Hora didn't seem quite as fluid, and I actually kind of thought he's not played they've not played that much together, you know, because yeah, that's come in and it's been bought and you know they've not actually had as many games together as as I'd kind of thought, um, and there's just been a few moments like. Do you know that case the ball goes over the top, the defender maybe thinks the goalie's coming out, the goalkeeper thinks the defender's going to deal with it, and these kind of couple of wee awkward moments. Um, mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, it's, you forget those three have come into the team, O'Hora included as well, and they're, they're creating a you know a goalkeeper and two new centre-halves. It's, it's difficult. You know, they've not played that much together. But, yeah. yeah, I don't think he sees James Scott, who, you know, full credit, like chasing that one down. Um, and he actually does incredibly well to keep it in, but actually the ball it's a, it's a cracking ball. Um, he plays back in, and and again it's a it's a decent header. Um, and obviously then when we go to the third goal, we're just at that point. I think we're we're all at sea. We actually and there's a tactical uh, switch before that, which we'll maybe get back into. But mm-hmm. the third goal, we sort of seem to be going right. We need to get something. We kind of push up, and we sort of Amos goes. He gets shoved off the ball too easily, and we're just sort of a bit all at sea positionally at that point. Um, and then it's one of those goals you can sort of see it happening as the ball um, sort of goes down the channel, and they're running in. You see uh, Oyson Smith just moving. You can't see anybody picking him up, and. Again, listen, it's a great cutback uh, from James Scott again, um, and, and it's a good finish. Uh, but again, it's one of those goals that I know from, from David Gray's point of view, he'll, he'll be fuming with because it, it's just a lot of self-inflicted stuff and just, I suppose, maybe not trusting exactly what the coaching staff are, are asking them to do and, and players maybe letting their emotions get a bit better off them mm-hmm. and things like that. And, and by that point, the game's done. Yeah, aye. Uh, but you said you had some some issues, some questions tactically in the second half. Yeah, I just thought, like, obviously Caden, Caden came on and um, I think for Milotnikov and they'd be put Boyle out to the left-hand side and, and Caden played on the right. Now, part of that might have been to give him some minutes. You know, we've got a busy couple of weeks coming up and two tough games against Celtic, so he might have wanted to give him some minutes. And I, I didn't really think... Cadden was as effective in that sort of wide right spot uh, playing beside Miller or playing in front of Miller, sorry. But 
in my head, I was thinking, right, probably in the next 10 minutes, we're going to see Kukarevic. We're probably going to see another change in midfield. I did think I would have preferred Levitt ahead of Amos personally, but I thought, well, once they do that, we can switch to that 3-5-2, which he played a little bit off in pre-season uh, before mm-hmm. Cadden got injured and put Miller at right centre-back, move Cadden right wing-back, and then you can obviously have a front two at that point. But I suppose what that did was it put Miller back into to right centre back, which he can play. But I think he was one of our best threats on that side. So you were kind of taking away one of our only kind of threats that we were we were having. Um, we were putting Boyle up top, which which is fine. Um, but then you were putting Josh Campbell back into a sort of deeper position beside uh, Joe Newell. Um, which again, I, I'm just not. I don't think that's the best place for him. I think he needs to play further up the pitch. So it was a wee bit square pegs and round holes. I kind of thought at that point. Um, I think I did say before the game, and obviously David Gray was at the the game on Thursday, and he would have watched a lot of St. Mirren. I did wonder if we would shape up exactly like that to play against them from the start, um, but. I think my question was, I don't think we've quite got the personnel to do that. And I, and I kind of think that showed a little bit um, with the, the kind of goals we lost at that point. And um, it's not, I suppose it's probably not a shape with the current <clears throat> squad. Although it's got some benefits and some merits, um, I think he maybe needs to maybe rethink that. Um, yeah. Even just in terms of the centre half, like who you put in there, would you probably prefer to have maybe Rocky at that or would we say actually no that's not going to work um, but we need to keep Miller right wing back it's, there's just loads of questions from it and I think just that I can see why they, they changed it the way they did he maybe wanted two strikers up top to try and to try and create something and Kukarevic mm-hmm. and Boyle together is is a good combo um, and we obviously had to take Venti off because he had he had sort of run his course but I just didn't think that quite quite worked and then obviously Having it's made cha- made the changes to the shape. That's sort of then where we lost the uh, when we lost the two goals. Yeah. So I mean, just overall, does this seem like a, this this result seem like a number of factors coming together? Because I think you've mentioned uh, the lack of depth. Um, you've mentioned maybe not quite having the personnel for um, the change in formation, uh, and also maybe just hinting about a kind of. A kind of lack still of cohesion, uh, maybe in some guys who have come into the sides um, who have again only just arrived in the summer. Did, did it feel like a kind of perfect storm of issues all coming together at once to 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 serve up that result in performance? I think so. You know, I think when you compare it to you know obviously St Mirren, uh, just as an example, I mean they were like the subs they made. You know, they obviously put Jaden Brown on, then they were able to put uh, Michael Mandra and James Scott on so you know in terms of a front two they still were able to press and put us under yeah. pressure um, as the game you know and that was around about 60 minutes um, so they were able to do that and players that can still you know in terms of the profile of player compared to the players they had on the pitch they, they fulfil the same role they fulfil the, you know, they do the same things they chase yeah. down they're yeah. powerful they're strong um, and then they're able to put you know you know Oshin Smith off the bench uh, like Coming in again, he's a box to box midfielder who's going to get forward. So if you can just even see if and maybe fans will be a bit annoyed. I'm comparing us to St. Mirren, but like the fact is that's where they've they've stuck something out. They've they've got their way of playing and they've recruited into that setup, and that's the type of players they're bringing in. And you know, with David Gray's inherited like bits and you know pieces off different managers, different squads. Um, yeah. And, and I think that's when, and he's trying to go, right, well, we need something to work. I need to try and get the best out of what I've got. And you can just see when games are, like, I think the subs there, you know, probably highlighted that for me and, and just showed that, you know, and, and we never really spoke about it um, there, but you look at Martin Boyle's chance as well, you know, at 1-0, the ball goes, you know, it's a long ball. I think it's maybe Taylor who missed times the jump. It's you know, And it's like the most perfect, if you drop a Martin Boyle chance, it's perfect. He gets in yeah. front of the defender, he runs in at that angle and you're just expecting him to kind of whip it across the keeper into the bottom corner or a bit of height into it. 
and it's a really poor finish. And and it's and he has really struggled, I think, since he's come back. He's he, he seems to be getting sharper and things are getting better, but we can't afford our big players to to not take those chances. And I think for a player like Martin Boyle, that is a really good chance. That is a that is a big chance. Um Venti's chance. And if you if you've got players who aren't in the top end of the pitch who aren't performing then at the other end, you've got new players coming in trying to strengthen a, a really weakened defence yeah, yeah. who have struggled over the last, like especially the last season and especially goals in the last sort of 25 minutes of games. And you just look at us off the bench and the type of players we're putting on, even, you know, guys like you know, Kukarevic has, has been fit like for most of last season, but hasn't had much game time. Amos has really struggled with his issues, fitness issues and and coming off as well, coming on Cadden as well. So the guys that are being thrown in are, Sort of dealing with their own fitness issues as well at this start, at this point in the season. So it just mm-hmm. seemed when you throw all that in, plus the the kind of lack of an investment at the top end of the pitch, I would say, um, it's, you know, from a second striker, maybe a number ten, maybe an extra winger or two. Um, I think that coupled with just David Gray coming into that and the and the job and, and where the fans are at the moment, I think you see all those factors coming together um, f- for. What what ended up being a really a really poor result? Yeah, uh, you could talk about the the boil chance. I think when you are in a in a your, your team in general is in a sort of place where you know changes are being made. There's probably going to be mistakes made. Things aren't quite clicking. Not quite as cohesive as they might be a bit further down the line when you are in that sort of transitional rebuild phase. I think you're kind of looking for your big players to then to not not so much. I mean, bail you out as such, but like when the big moments come along. You're, you're kind of really hoping these guys are going to step up. I mean, we just talked about kind of earlier on how, you know, St Mirren, four shots on target the whole game, three goals, Hibs, I think it was, I think they were, they were certainly well over double, I can't remember exactly, well over double figures for uh, overall shots. I think we were between 15, shots, 15 maybe. 16. Yeah, but only kind of two on target. And then you see the expected goals uh, on top of that. Like it's it was kind of higher than I expected it to be. To put it that way, I mean, I suppose you can you can debate the the numbers, the data, if you like, but it was it was kind of certainly higher than I thought it was going to be. So I mean, you're just when you're sort of a team that's a work in progress. So basically, I think what I'm trying to say is you do need to make those moments count, and Hibs didn't do that. Um, from, from again, from what I've seen, um, just a kind of few comments coming in here. One from Ian Talker. We don't have personnel all over the park. It's difficult to have a plan B, and we are easy to play against because of that. Now, I feel like Hibs. Um, there's been a lot of talk um, this summer, uh, maybe from David Gray, from the players, about how one of the priorities is making this team harder to play against. Uh, so, I mean, I, it doesn't seem great that we're now after the first um, Premiership game of the season and that the verdict, at least from obviously one supporter there, is that this team were too hard to play against. I mean, do, sorry, not too hard, too easy to play against. I mean, did you get that feeling again yesterday? I mean, it and that's maybe St Mirren didn't have to work as hard for the goals as they should have done. Uh, did you see any elements to suggest that it might get better? It's difficult because I think, and you know, like one of the changes we've obviously David Gray's tried to make in the in the shape because we've played like that sort of variation of a four two three one before and under Lee Johnson, and and you know at times that worked for us in sort of sometimes spectacular fashion where we'd pull games out the bag and get you know you know. F- can say what we want about Johnson, which is probably a lot of negative stuff. But the play, like at times, we pulled out big results and and moments. But that shape eventually became with the players that they had. We had just didn't work, you know. And that was one of the things that that uh, probably ended his tenure. I know Montgomery said it wasn't a four four two, but I think for, for it was for, for quite a for quite a long time. He tried to change it, and again, I, I don't think. You know, at times there was benefits to that, but we never quite got the front pairing right, and there was injuries and and things like Boyle not being fit, Venti not being fit, and you know Lafondra not play getting injured, and, and we never quite got a settled two there. Um, and then he changed back, so the shape. But I think one thing David Gray has done is he's tried to leave Newell as like a pivot player, deepest player, and encouraged Mariah Welsh or Levitt or Amos alongside Campbell to get further up and support the striker, get in and around the box, trying to create chances. Um, 
where I'm going with this is that when you do that and you ask your fullbacks to also get forward and, and be in and around that, is that you, you've got to accept that then you're susceptible to counterattacks and, and things that might make it a bit more difficult. Um, so I think in the first half there, I think we pressed really aggressively and we had a couple of really good turnovers, which I, I really liked. Um, and obviously that was us. Um, we actually had quite a lot of the ball. You know, I was quite surprised at how much possession we actually we actually had. So I think there were signs there that we are a bit more difficult to play against, I think. But it goes back to that round. I don't think the players are necessary. And it's nothing really about fitness and things like that, because I can imagine they've been worked. I know from Patrick's yeah. time there, they were worked hard and stuff. It's not a fitness thing, but at the moment, it's the the with the amount of games they're playing, all these things, they need you need players to come off the bench who can slot in and also work hard and know what they're doing. I just don't think we've quite got that balance yet. And, you know, Gray tried to change it. He tried to, to have a plan B, which is right now I'm going to match them 3-5-2 and then we'll go toe-to-toe with them. Uh, and, it, and it just didn't work. Um, but, you know, I think he's he was... I can understand the reasoning behind it. I, I just think with the personnel and, and maybe the way the game had panned out, with Miller's kind of influence in the game and where we were going, it maybe would have been better to maybe stick to the shape that we were in um, and go from there. But we need we need more bodies in, um, the right bodies in, um, because you know we I don't think we can we can survive the rest of the season on just what we've got right now in the squad. Yeah, just on that note, Jerry Charlson crying out for a creative midfielder. And a goal scorer. I mean, I suppose the hope will be is that Kukarevic and possibly in tandem or in rotation with Dylan Venti can now provide those goals. Uh, a creative midfielder, I would certainly agree with Jerry on that. I feel like you need another kind of creative presence in there. Um, again, I feel like obviously David Gray is putting a lot of faith in Josh Campbell, um, and I'm sure he's kind of always kind of showing. I feel like he's can get himself, you know, goal contributions. But I just feel like you could do another option in there as well. So I suppose just on, we were going to come back to this um, from earlier on. Are you kind of concerned about Dylan Venti? Um, obviously, he started so well with that hat-trick. But again, I think uh, it was either with yourself or Matty who was on last week. I just still look at him as a guy who, he just doesn't seem to have that that confidence in himself at the moment. Yeah, listen, I agree with the comment. I think a, a creative midfield and a creative midfielder is really important. Again, what it does is it, it just creates a bit more competition. And like for somebody like Josh Campbell, you know, let's, let's say we've got this creative number ten who's played and against St Mirren and we're sixty odd minutes and it's not quite worked out. And you know, we've had chances. Then putting Josh Campbell on to to give us a bit of grit and that press and that aggression for the last half an hour suddenly makes us, you know like a much more dangerous squad, do you know what I mean, to play against. Mm-hmm. I think that's yeah. where we're lacking is the guys who are in the first 11, we've got a good first 11. Right? It's not great, it's not, you know, it's not unbelievable, but it's a good solid first 11. But the without competition for places and that, and re, like what I mean is realistic competition for places because we know there's some players that aren't going to get any game time, yeah. they're not going to come off the bench. Realistic competition then you will just get guys just running out of steam. Um, and if they're having bad games or poor games or they're, they're struggling for whatever reason, then we can't make that change. So, And I think that's the, the classic thing for, for Venti at the moment. Like, I don't think he's going out to miss these chances. And I think you maybe said in your article, and it's like no solace to the fans, but we're getting the ball into the right areas and he's he's there. Like, he's in that right spot. But it's he just looks, I mean... Some of the chances he's missed have, have, I mean, it's been, it would be more difficult to miss them. Do you know what I mean? Um, I think he had a couple, like obviously against Kelly, the one on Sunday. Yeah. I think even against uh, Queen's Park as well, he, he had a few as well. And I think everybody's, like, he knocks his pan in. You can see that. He actually had some nice little bits of hold up play on, on Sunday. Um, but I think he just doesn't have that that physicality, I think, and um, especially if we are kind of struggling to make things click in that that top end of the pitch, then he sometimes just gets lost, really, um, in the game. And But to be fair, even when Kukarevic came on, I mean, I know at that point he came on and a few minutes later we conceded the second and the third, so I think, you know, we, the game was gone. We really struggled to, to create anything meaningful for, for him as well. So I'm quite intrigued to see how we how we utilise them both. If we go, if we play two, then obviously that will change the shape uh, overall, which 
uh, some people might want, but also it'll have some some positives and negatives, of course. Or if we'll go yeah. for just one and bringing somebody off the bench, I'm quite intrigued to see where we go from here. Yep. Uh, well, immediately um, next weekend it's to Celtic and then Celtic again. So uh, things aren't going to get any easier uh, for Hibs. Uh, but I mean, it could be if you want to try and put a positive spin on it, it could end up being you know a kind of spark to get the season going if you get a result in either of those games. Um, so we we'll need to see where it goes from there. Um, but I think we're going to park that now. Uh, and just leave it there for today. Um, I'm, sh- I'm sure there's not too many Hibs fans who want to dwell on this result for any longer, Craig being one of them. Uh, but, you know, thank you, as always, uh, for joining us, mate. Um, some really great insight. Thanks for your comments as well, folks. If you're watching us on YouTube, please do consider hitting the subscribe button to help us keep on growing that channel to bring you more of these videos. Um, and we'll be back with another later this week. But uh, until then, take care, and we'll see you again very soon. Cheers. Thanks.